A person's every move is executed by the constant instructions produced by the nervous and endocrine systems. The nervous system sends lightning fast electrical signals called action potentials to target cells and organs. The endocrine system uses a slower and a more wider scale approach to signaling. The endocrine system secretes chemical signals called hormones into the bloodstream, which then travel to nearby or distant target cells and organs. The results are long-lasting widespread effects. As the messenger molecules in the endocrine system, hormones play an essential role in driving changes in behavior, anatomical structure, and physiological processes to allow an organism to grow, survive, and reproduce. From birth to death, just about every cell and function in the body is under hormonal regulation. Hormones are produced and secreted by glands when stimulated, which will then move through the blood until they come in contact with specific receptors on or in target cells. The binding of hormones to target receptors and the subsequent activation leads to a signaling cascade that ends with a desired effect, be it activation of a set of proteins or gene expression. The main hormone producing structure in the body are the hypothalamus, pituitary gland, thyroid gland, parathyroid glands, pancreas, gonads, and adrenal glands. There are other structures in the body that also produce hormones, but I will hold off on listing them all here. Perhaps the most important structure in the endocrine system is the hypothalamus, which is located just below the thalamus and directly above the pituitary gland, which it controls. The hypothalamus is actually a dual structure as it is part of both the nervous and endocrine systems. In fact, the hypothalamus serves as a communication bridge between both systems. The hypothalamus receives input from a variety of sources, is stimulated by a variety of stimuli, and in return, it releases a variety of hormones. Five of these hormones are secreted into the hypophysial portal system, a capillary system that connects the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary gland. There are a total of five distinct three-part endocrine axes involving the hypothalamus, anterior pituitary gland, and distant endocrine tissues. This video will cover one of these axes, the hypothalamopituitary gonadotropic or HPG axis. The HPG axis begins with the hypothalamus releasing the tropic hormone called gonadotropin releasing hormone or GNRH into the hypophysial portal system. Gonadotropin releasing hormone travels through the blood in the portal system, down the pituitary stalk, and into the anterior pituitary gland where it binds to specific receptors on specific group of cells called gonadotrophs. Gonadotrophs then release luteinizing hormone, or LH, and follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH. In females, LH acts on the ovaries to trigger ovulation, stimulate the formation of the corpus luteum, and stimulate secretion of estradiol and progesterone from the corpus luteum. In males, LH acts on the lytic cells of the testes and stimulates the secretion of testosterone. In females, FSH stimulates the development of follicles and oocytes, while also stimulating the secretion of estradiol. In males, FSH stimulates sperm production. The HPG axis is primarily responsible for regulating these reproductive activities and other associated reproductive processes and behaviors. Think mating behaviors. But that's not all. The HPG axis also plays an important role 
in promoting healthy brain function by facilitating neurogenesis, neuronal differentiation in survival, and cognitive function, while also playing important roles in growth, bone and muscle health, and erythropoiesis. However, in this video, we will focus on the primary function of the HPG axis, which is controlling reproduction and reproductive development in males and females. Let's begin by looking at the HPG axis in males. Gonadotropin-releasing hormone released by the hypothalamus stimulates the production of LH and FSH from the anterior pituitary gland. The targets of LH and FSH are the male gonads, the testes. In males, LH acts on lytic cells in the testes to stimulate the release of testosterone. Testosterone causes sexual differentiation of the embryo during gestation, thus driving the embryo to proceed down the male pathway of development. Without this androgenic hormonal signal, all embryos would follow the female pathway of development, thus all offspring would be female. Testosterone, through its conversion to dihydrotestosterone, DHT, also promotes the development and maintenance of secondary sex characteristics in males. This includes human male characteristics like larger body size, increased muscle growth, pubic hair, axillary hair, and facial hair, deepening of the voice, enlargement of the Adam's apple of the thyroid cartilage, and the ever-popular male reproductive behaviors. Lastly, testosterone stimulates an increased rate of spermatogenesis, sperm production. Meanwhile, FSH acts on Sertoli cells to stimulate spermatogenesis and increase the production of androgen-binding globulin, ABG. Androgen binding proteins bind testosterone and DHT to help maintain a relatively high rate of spermatogenesis. We just discussed how the male HPG axis works. Let's now turn our attention to the female HPG axis. Gonadotropin releasing hormone released by the hypothalamus stimulates the production of LH and FSH from the anterior pituitary gland. The targets of LH and FSH are the female gonads, the ovaries. In females, FSH stimulates the development of follicles and oocytes in the ovaries, while also stimulating the secretion of estradiol, E2. Meanwhile, LH does a few things. First, LH acts on the ovaries to trigger ovulation. Ovulation occurs following an event called the LH surge. This is what ovulation tests focus on when a couple attempts to determine the best time to conceive a child. Second, following ovulation, LH stimulates the formation of the corpus luteum and the subsequent secretion of estradiol and progesterone. This is all necessary for the prolonging of the uterine cycle and maintenance of pregnancy should fertilization occur. Similar to testosterone in males, estradiol, which is actually derived from testosterone, is also involved in the development and maintenance of secondary sex characteristics. For females, these include things such as axillary and pubic hair, breast development, body fat redistribution, and female reproductive behaviors. Progesterone, on the other hand, is more active following reproductive maturity. Each month, progesterone plays an important role in the secretory phase of the uterine cycle by preparing the endometrium for the potential implantation of a zygote. More specifically, progesterone ensures the thickening of the endometrium while also stimulating the secretion 
of various nutrients in preparation for the zygote that may come. To summarize, reproduction in both males and females is controlled by the pulsatile secretion of GnRH from the hypothalamus, which in turn controls LH and FSH secretion from the anterior pituitary gland. Luteinizing hormone and FSH control the development of gametes, i.e. sperm and oocytes, and the secretion of sex hormones, i.e. the production of testosterone in males and estradiol and progesterone in females. Of course, there must be checks and balances. The body most often utilizes negative feedback loops for that purpose. In males, as described earlier, the LH secreted from the anterior pituitary gland acts on lytic cells to stimulate the secretion of testosterone. When levels of testosterone are increased, testosterone partakes in a negative feedback loop that decreases the activity of the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary gland. More specifically, high levels of testosterone inhibit the secretion of GnRH from the hypothalamus and LH from the anterior pituitary gland. The result is less testosterone is produced. Meanwhile, high levels of FSH secreted from the anterior pituitary gland act on Sertoli cells. In response to high levels of FSH, Sertoli cells release inhibin. As the name implies, inhibin inhibits the hypothalamus from secreting GnRH and inhibits the anterior pituitary gland from secreting FSH and LH. The result is a slower rate of spermatogenesis. Really, it's a more maintained rate of spermatogenesis. In females, the feedback mechanisms are perhaps a bit more complicated. Early on in the monthly reproductive cycle, high levels of estradiol and the development of a follicle and oocyte, which triggers the release of inhibin, act on the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary gland to decrease the secretion of GnRH, LH, and FSH. This is all to prevent the development of extra oocytes and follicles. Now, interestingly, there is a relatively small window of time, just before ovulation, where the level of circulating estradiol hits a high threshold level. When this level is reached, there is a positive feedback signal sent to the hypothalamus, thus stimulating a large secretion of GnRH in subsequent surge in LH. The surge in LH triggers ovulation. Following this, negative feedback loops return, with rising levels of E2, progesterone, and inhibin, all feeding back against the hypothalamus and anterior pituitary gland. So all these hormones and processes of the HPG axis make up only one of the several hormonal axes of the endocrine system, merely providing a glimpse into the vastness of the endocrine system. I hope this video provided you with a good understanding of the HPG axis and a deeper appreciation for the functions of the endocrine system as well as the intricacies of the human body.